Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, healing affirmations for the soul. Um, I want to just kind of like look at the latter rain. Um, I'm getting ready for work. You know, I always look for a scripture or a word um, after meditating and praying and the latter rain came in. Your latter shall be greater. So when I have worked on myself to change the former mindset and works. My life could be directed towards future endeavors where my latter reign begins and lives. Now I spelled reign, R-A-I-N, and I also spelled reign because some of us will begin to reign as kings and queens in this here time when we take our proper position. It's one thing to live in a place of comfort and just accepting what we're given as if we're dictated to, but there's another part of us all that says, I want to live the life that Christ or um, Buddha, whatever your uh, religious masters and leaders were in the countries that you come from. Um, and what this will do is catapult our thoughts to really think about, am I um, putting myself in positions and mindsets where I can accept a latter reign to reign um, in a greater stead in my life? And this includes our generations as well, because if we are only in comfort and accepting what others are giving us or even what others have taught us without studying more, just taking it to the next level, there's no rain to come because when you look at life, you can ask the questions for yourself. No one has to tell you. You'll look at it and say, is there a rain taking place in my life? And a lot of people think because of what's going on in the world that there is no rain to come, that maybe there's a famine. You know, people kind of live externally seeing what they see rather than using the power of God, what Christ was speaking of, to go within and create, create your world because you have your own world. So moving on from there, the latter rain shall be greater, but it's up to us to work with God to create that, not to work with the world. We're in this world, but not of it. So the place where the best is yet to come is what we're seeking, that is your reign, R-A-I-N, where the flourishing and prosperity comes. You're pursuing that rather than pursuing everything outside of you. And that reign is gonna take you to the place of R-E-I-G-N, reigning over what? Reigning over what God has given you, uh, your work, um, your, your, your home, your children. There is a reign to take back what belongs to people, but they don't understand it. Kings and queens of antiquity, they reigned because they were conquerors. Now, I'm not talking about conquering outside fighting. I'm talking about the conquering ability that Christ gave us with the word. It's something to pray about uh, what you need. And it's something to pray about a mindset in you that needs to change. It's something to pray and not P-R-E-Y, oh, you know, on people. P-R-A-Y is what I'm talking about with us Christians. Not P-R-E-Y, where gossip and slander and hatred and anger is. You know, the son of perdition, which I talked about yesterday. So, however, when I focus on the past disappointments, hurts, rejections, and so on, I diminish the power of God's work for the greater for the greater, for the latter rain in my life to manifest because my focus is not on God's stuff. My focus is actually on the son of perdition things. And that's where I really get a consciousness of knowing that the, the enemy is not outside of me, it's inside of me. This is how I've drawn others into my experience that's teaching me you think this way, and so here I am. You think this way, and so I've stepped into your um, experience. Now, when you start thinking latter and greater on a positive level, I am that money, I can do this and I can do that, you know, canceling out, I can, I can, or I, um, I don't think the best of myself. This is when the sun of perdition begins to lay down. You have to keep practicing that, practice it daily, because we practice, we practice daily to think negative of ourselves. We were given that uh, those anthems from people, and now we are practicing the anthems of life and love. 
Thank you, Oni. We are practicing the anthem of life and love. That means that my focus is right here. I'm studying to show myself approved. I'm not looking over here to see if they're doing it. Right here in this space, you know how horses, when they're being trained, they have reins where they only can see this way. No, I'm not saying that we're horses, but we have to think like straight ahead. The path is narrow. The Bible tells us it's very... um plain the bible is very plain we make it you know uh we make it hard to understand it's simple because it says that the way is narrow that means that i need to have you know a gauge a navigation but more than anything i give you you know if your glasses are on or if you can think of the horse with um uh that's being trained and they put those um um, I don't know what they call him, but they're on the side is to keep him from his perception going to the left or to the right because they want him to focus on the straight road. Right. And that's your power. All right. So hurts and rejection. So I diminish the power of God's work. But greater. So the, the pain that I think about daily, even right now, we're having the eclipse and a lot of people are having things that's being cut away from them. It's all for our good. And I know a lot of people don't want to talk about the moon and the sun, but the blood moon is in the Bible. It, I can't remember the scripture that it's in. It's in John, by the way. Uh, the blood moon is there. Uh, Malachi uh, 4 talks about the sun. S-U-N will rise with healing in his wings. Read it in um, King James. Um, and, and then go and do a Google search because too many people are like they stuck on what people are saying about um, the astronomy when the heavens uh, are created over our head. Are you kidding me that I wouldn't study to find out what's going on up there and I'm just going to study earthly? Yeah, I'm going to go in because you know what? He said, bind what's in heaven and bind it in earth. Loose in heaven and loose in earth. How do you lose something in heaven when you don't even know about it? You only know what people have taught you. Because as I know it outside of me, heaven is a demonstration of creativity that God gave us in the astros. Astronomy. God gave it to us because it was a part of who we are. So if I do not come to know about the heavenlies, then I'm stuck like Chuck in the earth. And life is not only made of earth. Man, you you know what? You should get in on my classes because earth, wind and fire, we experience that every day and water. They tell you not to understand alchemy and they tell you not to understand, you know, uh, what earth, wind, fire and water is. The group sung it. Earth, wind and fire was deep. Go back and listen to some of their music. For well, all of those that had, you know, uh, looked away from truth, they didn't know. Yeah, we didn't know. Consciousness awakening right now. Earth, wind, and fire, we're made up of it. The problems that we're having is ignorance. All right, let me get back to my word because I want our people to um, prosper. But I... My wanting and desiring is different from others. And anyone that, you know, listens to the video and oh, they say, you know, what, what is she talking about? Mm, don't turn off. Keep listening because it's what you hadn't heard before, what you desired not to listen to because somebody else told you not to. How about learning what you don't know? I challenge you. You know why? The gates of heaven will open up for you. And then you will begin to prosper. It's one thing for me to talk to people about a mindset, the rain and the latter rain. But when you don't know yourself and that you are created out of about 80 percent of water, you don't know that there's going to be challenges because you do not know what you're made of. This here is some baby stuff I'm giving. Because I am hoping that people would begin to wake up and challenge themselves to study for their self and get that emotional high out of spirit that is available, that practice, that uh, that peace that passes all understanding. I am not hoping that I would be here every day and people are just listening and some people are saying, well, I like what she say and I don't like what she's saying. I'm hoping that people will become educated and edified so that their souls will prosper and they will see from their spirit man what they're capable of and 
edify their communities, okay? So Job, in the midst of the, the latter and the former, this is what Job 8 and 6, 7 says, though your beginning was small, and you got to think about what beginning God is talking about, because that small beginning has to do with the beginning of the birthing time, hours, right? Yeah. Because we thought we were being blessed, but honey, we ain't, we ain't been blessed because the latter shall be greater, especially if you're working and practicing spiritually on your greater. You ain't paying attention to the haters and all of that stuff that people are doing and saying you are focused on what God has called you to do. So though your beginning was small, yet your latter end would increase abundantly. Now, I'll tell you that when I was younger reading this here, I'd be like, yeah, I'm going to increase in. Yeah, it's my latter is right now. I had a small beginning, too. But I'll keep on practicing to say my ladder shall be greater. Why? Because I feel that. And as I feel it, the feeling gets the blessing. Now, I don't know who all knows, but most people should know about Job. In the beginning of Job, in the first chapter, Job was one of God's favorite. But by, I believe, some prayers and all of that, Job actually brought challenge on himself because he would pray for his children in a way that he was afraid. You can read it. And as you read it, you'll get an understanding. However, the devil, so to speak, in the scripture went to God and said, how about, you know, he uh, give him the. Um, um, if he would let if God would let him. Um, test Job. And so God did say yes. And so all of this here testing caused Job to lose everything. Family, everything. He was a very wealthy man. In 8 and 7, it says, though your beginning was small, yet your latter end would be uh, increased abundantly. This is a part where his friends and him were discussing the situation. You know, his friends mocked him and said, well, why don't you just, you know, kind of like um, pull away from the belief system? You can go over and read it for yourself. Um, they also said, what is God pretty much doing for you now? Um, some things that we've heard, because a lot of us that have stayed the plan, um, we've had seeming losses. And see, this is why I bring my people. You know, when I'm talking with my people, I always say seeming because if I profess that I lost anything, that means that it's solid. It was just seeming the perception, you know, like the, the horse's eyes were able to go over here and see that, oh, it's nothing there on the external. But see, I want to keep my vision right here inside where I'm building the kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So here, as we go on, um, I'm going to give you Job 42 and 12. After all of that, from the beginning of Job, the losses of family and everything, look at it for yourself and understand the encouragement, the motivation, because your ladder shall be greater. But it's predicated upon your stand. Will you stand in your past where uh, the seeming losses were or will you move forward into your future where your ladder is? You see? And so here in Job 42 and 12, it says, so the Lord blessed Job's latter days more than his first. So sometimes, yeah, I'm looking over there because see over there without my little bridle on or whatever the horse is at, I'm able to look over there. But I still see you see me. You trying to tempt me, see me. But uh -uh, God said my ladder will be greater. And so God has made space and emptiness in my life, moved everything away so that I can reign, R-A-I-N, and then sit in the reign of my queenship. You feel what I'm saying? And my kingship. So here, the Lord blesses Job's latter days more than his first. He owned 14,000 sheep. He owned 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. The key with all of these animals, most people don't understand, is that animals was your money back then. So this dude came back 100, 200, 300 fold advanced beyond what he had. Now, it can't, it can't take away the feelings of loss of family. No, it cannot. 
But God said, you know what? I've been watching you and how you've been handling things. You didn't ever lash out at me. You didn't never lash out at them when they came against you. You just kept your peace. It's a word there. Do not fight. Let God fight, especially when you say that you're a Christian. If you are practicing spirituality, mend your anger and whatever issues. Release the toxins so that you don't forfeit your blessings. I'm speaking to myself and everyone. Do not let your old small self forfeit the blessings that you're walking into under any circumstances. Stay right in your focus of who you are and what you're creating. It's a powerful time, a powerful time of change and transformation. And so I'm going to give y'all the um, affirmation for the day now. Thank you for listening and thank you, God, for blessing us. All of us all over the world, collectively in our communities and cities, you know, thank you for the angels that are released on our behalf, that are leading and guiding us, that are healing us and blessing us continuously, that are bringing us into a unity of bonding in um, the human experience. Thank you for the light workers and all the empaths. Thank you for the wisdom that you're giving them. And not only that you're giving it to them, Father, but that they are seeing the truth that sets them free from codependency and toxic issues so that they can receive their ladder. Okay. So healing affirmation. It says connecting with our higher self. This is Christ. This is Buddha. This is Krishna, whoever you worship, you know, like Gandhi, he only wanted peace to be a part of our experience. That was his part as a, a master. All right. So it says connecting with our higher self is easier than most people think. Yet without this connection, it is also often difficult to find the strength, understanding and aspiration we need to live our lives. Find somewhere quiet where you can be undisturbed for a while. Somewhere in nature is especially good and sit or lie down and simply intend to connect with your higher self, your Christ within, your Buddha, whatever your uh, spiritual and religious discipline is. The answer often pops into your mind even before you finish formulating the question. And it's true. This is a part of getting to know yourself. And this is a part that I advocate for because even though we pray outside, we must pray and we must seek God within and wait for answers. Wait to hear from God, look to hear from God. And the more we are in that position, which is called the presence, the more we will receive from the spirit. And then we will see that a lot of things we have been working towards and controlling, we didn't have to. So healing affirmations for today, connecting with our higher self. And we are also looking for and working towards our lighter rain. You guys be blessed. Naila, I thank you for being on. And Naila is a part of my um, leadership team, our leadership team. And she has her own uh, wellness coaching business. You can find her at Naila Oni Speaks on Instagram. Put it down in the box for me. God bless you. You guys have a good day. See you tomorrow and just be at peace in this new energy that we're receiving.